Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video based on everything that you need to know about the atmosphere, including climate change and the test for oxygen. Starting off with the early atmosphere. So, how did our gases get into the atmosphere? Nice and simply, volcanoes. Volcanoes erupted, they gave out gases including CO2 and H2O. We're fairly sure we know this because we look at the planets Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars have volcanoes, the atmospheres are carbon dioxide. So what happened to the water vapour? Nice and simply, the Earth cooled. When the Earth cooled, the water vapour condensed and it turned into our oceans. Was there any oxygen present in the early atmosphere? We don't think so. Reason for that, volcanoes do not produce oxygen. And also, in ancient rocks, there's something called iron pyrite. Now that is something that only exists when there is no oxygen present. So we're fairly confident there was no oxygen in the early atmosphere. What about carbon dioxide? Now, in the early atmosphere, it was around 90%. Now it's less than 1%. So how has it gone down? And there are three ways you need to know. Number one, after the oceans formed, the carbon dioxide dissolved into those oceans. So the percentage went down. And then sea creatures evolved and they took in that carbon dioxide. They used it to form their shells. As they did that, the amount of carbon dioxide in the water went down, so more carbon dioxide could then be dissolved into the oceans. And then finally, plants started to evolve. You've guessed it, photosynthesis occurred. So carbon dioxide was taken in and oxygen was produced. This next section is going to have a look at the test for oxygen. Which nice and simply, you take a splint, you set it on fire, and then you blow it out so it is still glowing. So still red around the edges, still got some energy left. You take that glowing splint, which is your first mark, you put it into a test tube or a beaker or a container with oxygen in, and it will relight. So your test for oxygen is it relights a glowing splint. The final section of this video is going to have a look at the greenhouse effect. So the sun gives out light and heat, and those light and heat rays travel to the earth. The heat is absorbed by the atmosphere, and the atmosphere contains greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, water vapour, and methane CH4. Now if you increase the amount of those greenhouse gases, the more greenhouse gases there are, the more heat gets trapped. Now greenhouse gases are a good thing because they keep the earth warm enough for us to survive on it, but the more there are, it's going to do things like melting our ice caps. And if that happens, the sea levels are going to rise. That's going to lead to more flooding. There's going to be more extreme weather like drought, storms, floods. So it's really important that we do things to stop the amount of greenhouse gases going up. Now it's really important as scientists that we can back up these claims. So how do we have the evidence that as carbon dioxide levels are going up, so is the temperature of the Earth? And this is called a causal link. A causal link is where something directly impacts on another. So what scientists did was they measured the heat or infrared energy leaving the Earth's atmosphere. And as carbon dioxide levels have gone up, the amount of infrared energy leaving has gone down. So that proves that as carbon dioxide levels have gone up, the average temperature has gone up, and we're fairly confident that there is a causal link there. You might also be asked how we're putting more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Nice and simply, farming increases the amount of methane. Mining fuels or ores increases the amount of CO2 and H2O produced. And combustion, CO2 given out. Right, the next section of this video is going to focus on acid rain, how it forms and the effects of it. So if we take any fossil fuel and heat it, a lot of our fossil fuels have an impurity, which is called sulphur. An impurity is something that shouldn't be there, something that we don't want to be there. And because we're heating that as well, it will react with the oxygen in the air and form something called sulphur dioxide, SO2. That sulphur dioxide will then rise up and it will move into our clouds. And when it dissolves in the water, it forms something called sulfurous acid. 
So you get a simple equation of SO2 plus H2O goes to H2SO3. That H2SO3 being sulfurous acid. That sulfurous acid then reacts with the oxygen again, and it turns into sulfuric acid. So H2SO3 plus O2 becomes H2SO4, and that H2SO4, that sulfuric acid, is our acid rain. So why is that a bad thing? So you need to remember a few different things. It acidifies our soil, it acidifies lakes or water, and it weathers statues and corrodes metal. If we go into a bit more detail on that, when it acidifies the soil, it means the plants can't grow, they can't get the nutrients, they can't photosynthesize, so they stop growing. If it acidifies the water, the pH goes too low, so animals and plants can die from it. When it weathers your statues, it's particularly your limestone statues, calcium carbonate, and when it corrodes metals, in particular your iron. And it's not just sulfur that can cause acid rain, it's also nitrogen. Nitrogen which makes up 78% of our air. So in our car exhausts, if they get too hot, the nitrogen, N2, can react with oxygen in the air, which is O2, and it will form various nitrous oxides. So for example, NO2, N2O5, and so on. Now these nitrous oxides go up into the air again, and they can form acid rain. And this time it's HNO3, nitric acid. These have exactly the same effect that we just talked about on your statues, on your soil, on your water. There are other problems though. NO2 can cause breathing problems such as bronchitis. They can also cause smog in the air. So what we have to do to make sure that it's safe is we have to use catalytic converters. The catalytic converters go into our car, we've talked about them in a previous video, and they take those nitrous oxides and they turn them back into nitrogen. The next section is going to have a look at using hydrogen as a fuel. Now the best way to do that is to have a look at the word equation, which is hydrogen H2 plus oxygen O2 goes to water H2O. Now the massive benefit of using hydrogen as a fuel is it only produces water vapour, which means we don't get CO2 like we do with combustion of most fuels. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and we'll talk about why that's a bad thing in a little while. So if we go back to hydrogen, it's flammable. That's a good thing because it produces energy. It gives out lots of energy. However, it also means that it needs to be stored. It's a gas, so it's hard to store. We need to have lots and lots of pressure to be able to store it, and that takes money. So that's one of your major disadvantages for using it as a fuel. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.